Alrighty folks, I want to welcome you back to another video from Yates Computers Tips and Reviews. This one I've covered a little bit of this category, but I wanted to go more into detail. This is about the M.2. M.2 is actually the socket that's on the motherboard or on the device. The easiest device I have to show you is actually an external case that can be used as storage. So it just snaps in there. There's a little screw that holds it in on the board. The board slides in the case, the case closes. This is an external hard drive that is an M.2 port, but it's a SATA card. It's not an MVME. I'm gonna do two videos coming up after this about the two differences. There's a huge, huge difference. It's also buyer beware right now with Windows 11 out, coming out. Everybody needs to buy newer computers to know the difference between these two. The SATA and the MVMP are two completely different drives. There's a huge difference. Not a little difference, a huge amount of difference between the two. This is the same as a standard SATA drive that you put in your computer, just in this format. I wanted to sum that up. MVME is a lot faster, a lot higher performance than this. This is a SATA drive, is the best description I can give you. It is SATA drive. It doesn't matter if it's this format or the other style format, like the hard drive, the smaller, the smaller newer drives compared to this. This is way slower than this. This has higher capacity, higher space than these. You can get some that are like four terabyte right now, but you're gonna pay a lot a money for them so there's factors there so I will go through some of that for home users they have a terabyte that's a decent price that's a hundred and some bucks 200 bucks depending on the brand depending on the versions depending on what speed you want home version users probably don't need the highest speed there is out there. Business in, graphics designing, accounting, some of those things you may want to have the fastest you can get. As time of this video, the standard is three, but there is version four out. It is a lot faster than the three, but it's a lot more expensive. One of the things I wanted to bring up about something like this is if you upgrade like I did, this came in on my computer. It was a SATA. I looked at the manufacturer of my laptop, my computer. I have a video on that talking about how I upgraded it. And it said it supports the MVME also on that port. So I wanted to see, is there really a difference between a SATA and an MVMP, e -V -M -E drive that I would notice? Because I just log in, I go on Facebook, I do other things, I play a few Facebook games and stuff. Surprisingly, yes, I did notice it was really a lot faster, response time was quicker, a lot more things were smoother as fast as these are I was really surprised on that factor so I wanted to state that because with Windows 11 coming out with people migrating over to Windows 11 because it is out now but one of the factors they have is I guess they have driver issues or some compatibility issues with these drives where they're running slower well the funny thing is, is they're running slower. If you bought one with an MVME, 
and it slows down to half the speed, <laughs> you're probably not really going to notice an effect. Unless you're on a high-end gaming machine or some other sort of machine like that. Home users probably won't notice. Once they get the drivers and everything resolved and or whatever their issue is. But I don't recommend you going out and buying that right now. Because of that current issue. It may be a motherboard flaw. Where they have to actually change a chip or something on a motherboard to resolve that issue. So it might not only be just drivers. But most likely it has to do with coding and drivers because from what I've seen, benchmark wise, same motherboard, same everything, but the speeds are off because of the OS. The operating itself, operating system itself is the only thing that's changed on the system. So it has to do with a few factors like that. Second factor, it could also be, are the drives. There's chips, there's memory, there's programming, there's little things on these chips that might affect it. Maybe they need a ROM update, some other factor to work with Windows 11. All these things will be figured out hopefully within the next six months to a year. Hopefully by the time you see this video. So I wanted to cover that. Because I wanted to cover what the M.2 actually is. It is not the stick. It is this port here. I'm pretty sure I've shown that in other videos. But I wanted to cover that factor. That factor is really important. Because just because you have an M.2... There's a lot of variables that go into that. I believe there's four to five different sizes of sticks. This is the full. There's halves, there's quarters, there's all kinds of weird different sizes. If, I don't want to take it off, but if you get a computer and you know what it has in it, you want to make sure you know. Because I can actually show you in the back, in here, this actually accepts all the different sizes. You can see where the screw is on the end. That's the full. You see there's three other holes there. So there's four different sizes that this will accept. So that's one of the really interesting things about these. And uh, one of the things that really I thought was really kind of scary to think about. If you know what. A wireless card is actually I might have one of those around they're just little tiny cards that you put into a computer they make now these cards that is technically your hard drive this big beast and that size I don't know the actual memory sizes on them they might be really small memory I don't know how much they can jam on there but that's also a variable you want to look at because if you bought something like a tablet or something of that sort where you think i can just run out and buy one of these and put it in there be careful there's different sizes also it might only accept the little one because of what kind of device it is so that's one of the variables i wanted to point out when you're dealing with the m.2 that's not even SATA, that's not the NVMe, that has nothing to do with that. Those, that's different. That's a different kind of speeds and processing and all of that type of stuff. So I wanted to cover that in this about that port. Because I think this is going to be a big factor here from now on. This is where most of the technology is going. Most of the drives are going this way. Companies that want to save money are still using the smaller little SATA drives because they're cheaper. They're still quick. They're still pretty quick. Other factor I wanted to bring up with this is now they mount 
to your motherboard. Most of them will have a port. This is an older motherboard, so it's kind of a bad example for that, but it'll show you the other factor. These are for your, your drives, your SATA cables out to your drives. One of the other factors I kind of brought up that I didn't really mention in my power supply video about making sure you have accurate, good power is now you have some of these boards that support at least two of those. I've seen boards that have three to four of those on there. Now there's cards you can put in the slots. These are old slots. They're not the PCI slots, Express. But you can actually run like eight or nine of these on that board and how it draws power. Because as you see from here, there's no power cord. There's just a USB cable. So the power comes through this USB. So this is one of those factors that I brought up before on my power supply about all these things that you can actually plug into computers nowadays that draw so much power. You want to make sure your computer can support that. You want to make sure you have a big enough power supply. That's one of the problems I see in a lot of pre-made and manufactured ones. 200 watt, 150 watt, 300 watt. I'm like, whoo, you know, how much can I actually run off of that other than the computer? That computer was actually designed by engineers and stuff for that computer, that chassis, those parts. So that's one of the factors. Most gamers and most people like that out there are going to have their own makes, models, everything they like. But one of the factors I wanted to bring up is you have, like this board has power here that usually goes for the CPU. This goes to the motherboard. Modular power supplies. Even standard power supplies. You want to make sure you know what that voltage is. Because now, when you put these all on that board, that's taking voltage from the board. So, that's one of the factors I want to bring up. Because when you attach the IAD, it's actually attached to your power supply through separate cables. So, that's one of the things I wanted to mention about those. Most computers where it comes with it in there and it's already set that way, you should be fine. I don't know the exact voltages of every card compared to the SSDs. You'd have to go look at some benchmarks. You'd have to go look at a lot of things that are out there because it's hard for me to compare that to you and give you those kind of numbers because in a month, two months, three months, all that's outdated. There's stuff coming out every day, different makes, different brands, Every year they update the models, everything, everything changes. But I do want to say the SS, S, the serial ports, sorry, brain freeze, they're at max capacity of data. We have met what they can basically handle unless there's some new version out there that they can come up with but as a SATA drive through a SATA cable that is about the max performance you're going to get unless something crazy comes out of the woodwork that someone hasn't thought of so I wanted to sum that up and state that because most computers coming up in the future will most likely be your main OS on here and a SATA drive secondary. The way the technology is right now, you may end up with two or three of these on your computer and a SATA drive. Or if you really need high, high capacity, you might be running something like this. Something like this would be for your Word documents, your photos, those type of things. If you're a gamer, most gamers will go double cards. So that way they have their OS on one and they have their gaming on the other. Problem is, is games are getting so large. That is one of the mind-boggling things to me nowadays. 
You're talking about minimum requirement for these things that I would recommend is a 500 gig. 500 gig. That's not gaming. That's personal use, loading operating system, loading software, saving your files, caching, all of that type of stuff. You would want that. Reason is, is because they don't recommend you filling that drive. They only recommend about a 50% capacity. Because to save the modulars, it moves the data around and it transfers and it shifts things around for performance. So that's another factor I wanted to bring up with these. Is you don't fill them all the way. I wouldn't recommend you going past 50%. 75% would probably be pushing it. <coughs> also, these a lot of times have software you load in the computer that'll actually check the drive when you boot up the computer. And it'll tell you, hey, this drive's starting to wear, this one's starting to show bad chips, this one's starting to show this. They tell you they recommend you changing it. That's a good thing. Because with the old fashioned drives, you used to have to run special software and all kinds of other things to see if your drive was okay. It would take hours for you to check these drives. If this drive failed on you all of a sudden, oh no, now what? You had to try to put it in as a secondary, figure out was it the OS, was it the drive, you know, if the drive completely died, whatever. One feature I liked and what I see on this is it seems like these kind of give you a warning. They will tell you if there's a performance hit. They'll tell you a lot of things. The com some computers, when you put them on there, will actually give you a screen on your thing telling you about your drive. Hey, boom, hey, it'll let you know. So that's really a big important thing that, to know. Of course, then you look at makes and models of them, speeds of them, certain brands. Certain brands have migration software where it'll copy everything from one drive to the other for you. It comes with your drive. That's great. That's what I recommended in a lot of places. That's what I did here when I changed. I bought the brand that I knew had the migration software that I knew worked. So that's stuff you need to know. That's all about the M.2. That's not about SATA versus the MVME. That's completely different. If you're happy with SATA speeds, usually the SATA versions of these cards are cheaper because they're slower, but you get a good performance out of it. But if you're looking online, Black Friday or something of that sort, some holiday sale, and you come across one that you know, why is that cheaper or the same price as that? I would recommend, yeah, that's what I did. It was at a great price. I looked at it. I went, I really want to see if there's a difference. Not to mention, I knew I was going to buy this little thing. So that drive ended up being a USB drive for me. So it was a win-win. So that's one of the factors I wanted to bring up. Not to mention that was pretty cheap too because everything was on sale. Now with the war going and all this other craziness going, the pandemic and, you know, the Afghan war and all this other stuff still going on, there's a lot of craziness on can you get these parts? Can you get these things? How much is it going to cost you now because of the world and all the craziness that's going on? So these are some of the factors. Some of this stuff might be close out, might be last year's model, new model coming out. And you look at them and you look and there's a small performance difference between the brand new model and last year's model. But it might be half the price 
uh, the new model. Unless you're into some hardcore gaming and some other things, then that probably won't matter for you at all. Because you'll have a nice quick computer. You might not have the top, top of the line and all of that. But to get the top, top of the line, what else do you need to change? Your motherboard? CPU? What else comes into that factors? Because now you got a faster drive. What's your memory speed? There's all kinds of things. How much memory you have? How many channels are you running? I have videos on channels. You run on a server board. I have videos on that too. How many processors? That's basically what a server board is. Is how many processors you have. How many sticks of memory? What size? Speeds of memory. There's a lot of factors that come into this other than M.2. But an M.2 is really nice. But it goes back to the factor with the M.2. That's the one factor I have not really heard anybody, anybody, anybody talk about is the sizes. Some boards only support full. Some things support the smalls. Some things support everything. So when you look, you got to really look at that. Because especially like the motherboards, the high-end gaming ones, there's heat sinks and stuff that are attached to it that are attached to the motherboard. To other components on there where it spreads the heat out. And so there's a lot of little factors you want to look at. Maybe some have M.2s full, like two of those, and maybe a small. Or There's a lot of different factors. So I wanted to point that out when you're looking. Not to mention, if you kind of know what you want for an M.2, SATA, MVME, versions, 3, 4, then you can look at your motherboard, figure out, do I want two of them? Do I want three of them? Maybe I want to add a card in there so I could put two on that card to an existing. You're going to have to do your research, do your homework on that stuff to find out what the capabilities are. There's some RAID units out there that I've seen where you can add eight or nine of those and it'll RAID them, it'll mirror them, it'll stripe them, it'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know performance factor, reliability, when you start getting into RAIDing and striping and all of that type of stuff on that. There's benchmarks out there. There's people that have benchmarked these cards and done a lot of things out there that you can do your homework and research on. But... I believe this is going to be where the wave of the future really is because this is the fastest technology out there right now. And I don't know where the end of this is going to be. Because, yeah, they're making cards like that right now. But what stops them from making a card like this size? Where then you have 8, 12, 16 terabytes of data. Because instead of adding an insert card and then adding all those drives to it, maybe they'll have an interface cable where you can plug it in and plug it in and you have everything in one unit. You don't know where the technology is going, but this is where it's at right now. So I wanted to cover some of that. But that's the M.2. Maybe in the future... SATA ports will go away and you'll have M.2 ports for drives. So that's why I wanted to cover that because wireless cards in most computers are M.2. So you have to be careful also to look at your board. They're a very similar socket. I believe I've covered before the difference between the M.2 sockets, there's different sockets also. There's an M.2 for SATA, M.2 for MVME, and then there's basically an M, uh, M.2, 
that's basically universal that will take either or. I know I have it on my other video that I've done. It's where the notch is on the board. There's a little pin, like in memory, where that pin is. It's different between DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. Now I believe it's DDR5 coming out. That's being tested and a lot of issues with. But that's a variable that's out there that will show you actually what the card is. Do your homework, do your research. They'll explain all that better. But for this, I wanted to cover the port itself because I did not go into, I think, too great a detail. I've gone into a lot of detail and a lot of information on this video to let people know what this port is. I've changed from one computer, old fashioned mechanical drive. Pretty sure I mentioned this in the other video, but the computer, when you'd run a task, it would come up, okay, starting this task, and you'd see it run, okay, doing this next part of the task, you'd see the bar go across. Put in a nice gaming NVMe drive. Copied all the data over with the nice software that came with it. Now you run that task, you go, blink, blink. If you blink, you missed it. And this is a payroll process where then it starts printing your receipts and all your documentation. So it went from five or six windows of you waiting for it to process to blink, blink, and it's working. It's there. It's going. So that's the huge difference between going from an old mechanical drive to an M dot two MVME it was a version three not the newest version four that's out there now that is pretty much for the hardcore gamers and other stuff like that but it changed the process so much faster by using that port I knew it was going to be a big improvement I did not realize it would be that big of an improvement so when I go into these I'll explain more into these I won't go into too much benchmarking or explaining of too many things but the key process is that I want to cover is these drives can do one task at a time one it can pull one piece of data they're fast enough that you don't really realize because it pulls data so fast. These can run hundreds or thousands at the same time. So that's what I wanted to cover through the M.2, how there's a major, major difference. Same with SATA port. So I think I will wrap this one up and get ready to go through a SATA drive and an MVME drive. They'll be two separate videos because they are two separate things. I don't want to lump them together and get people confused on this and this. So, alrighty, I'm going to wrap that up right after this. Keep an eye out for the next videos. Thank you.